Welcome to our first Now on Android for 2022, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. It has been a long time since our last real update, so this edition might be better titled Recent in Android. We've got updates from the Gradle and Data Store Mad Skill series, accessibility, multiple screen sizes with Compose, drag and drop, the Jetpack Glance Alpha, the Jetpack Watch Face Library, our revamped guide to app architecture, the Watch Next API for TV, the beta of Android games on PC, and more. We made the first release of Jetpack Glance available, helping you build app widgets using modern, declarative Kotlin APIs like what you're used to with Jetpack Compose. The Jetpack Compose runtime is used to translate Glance's composables into remote views that can be displayed in an app widget. We launched the Jetpack Watch Face library, which includes all functionality from the wearable support library, along with many new features such as watch face styling, support for a WYSIWYG watch face configuration UI in the phone, smaller separate libraries, and more. We launched a revamped guide to app architecture, which contains pages for UI, domain, and data layers, including deep dives into more complex topics such as how to handle UI events. We also have a learning pathway to walk you through it. We announced that we're opening signups for Google Play Games on PC as a beta in Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. It allows users participating in the beta to play a catalog of Google Play Games on their PC via a standalone Google-built application. The developer site has a form to express interest, along with information about bringing your Android games to PCs. It involves many of the same updates that you do to optimize your game for Chrome OS devices, such as support for mouse and keyboard controls. We continued our series on modern Android development, Mad Skills, closing out Mad Skills covering Gradle and the Android Gradle plugin APIs. Firstly, Marat covered building custom plugins in more depth, including the Artifact API in addition to the Variant API covered previously. It demonstrates building a plugin which automatically updates the version code specified in the app manifest with a Git version. With the AGP 7.0 release, you can use these APIs to control build inputs, read, modify, or even replace intermediate and final artifacts. Next, Alex Avo, maintainer of the Gradle Play Publisher and Version Orchestrator plugins, offers a tutorial on how to manipulate your Android build artifacts with the AGP and Gradle APIs. Then we did a live Q&A around Gradle and AGP build APIs, where Florina was joined by Marat, Jerome, and Wojtek. A wrap-up post then summarizes the whole Gradle topic. So Mona began Mad Skills Data Store. Data Store is a thread-safe, non-blocking library in Android Jetpack that provides a safe and consistent way to store small amounts of data, such as preferences or application state, replacing shared preferences. It provides an implementation that stores typed objects backed by protocol buffers, Proto Data Store, and an implementation that stores key value pairs, Preferences Data Store. For ongoing content, be sure to check the Mad Skills playlist on YouTube, the articles on Medium, or our handy landing page that points to all of it. Since the last Now in Android episode, a lot of libraries were promoted to stable, such as Compose Constraint Layout, which brings support for Constraint Layout to Compose. We also released Coordinator Layout 1.2, Car App 1.1, Room 2.4, SQLite 2.2, Collection 1.2, and Wear Watch Face 1.0. Check out the post for more on our alphas, including our first alpha of Jetpack Compose 1.2. Alex wrote about the recent updates to Jet News that improves its behavior across big and small mobile devices. It describes our design and development process so you can learn our philosophy and associated implementation steps for building an application optimized for all screens with Jetpack Compose, including how to build a list slash detail layout. Paul wrote about drag and drop and how the Android Jetpack drag and drop library alpha makes it easier to handle data dropped into your app. The accessibility series continues on, beginning with an episode on how to properly implement UI elements that disappear after a set amount of time. We also cover accessibility scanner and how it can help you improve your app for all users by suggesting accessibility improvements. Finally, we investigate how Espresso and the Accessibility Test Framework can help you create automated accessibility tests. In the world of Android and Google TV, Mayuri covered best practices for the Watch Next API, which allows your content to show up in the Watch Next row. There have been three episodes of Android Developers Backstage posted since the last Now in Android. In episode 179, Fliberty Widget, 
Chet and Roman talk with Nicole and Peter from the London Engineering Office about their work on app widgets and digital well-being. In episode 180, Kotlin Magic Platform, Chet and Roman talk with Yeet from the Android Toolkit team about Kotlin Multiplatform. And in episode 181, Architecture, Fewer Bugs at the End, Chet and Tora chatted with Yeet again, and Manuel Vivo from the developer relations team about application architecture, including how our architecture recommendations apply in the new Jetpack Compose world. That's it for this time from now and recent in Android. With the Gradle and Data Store Mad Skills series, Android X releases, articles about Compose across multiple screen sizes, and drag and drop. We launched the Jetpack Glance Alpha, the Jetpack Watch Face Library, our revamped guide to app architecture, and the beta of Google Play Games on PC. We covered the Watch Next API for TV and had podcasts covering app widgets, Kotlin multi-platform, and architecture. Come back here soon for the next update from the Android developer universe.